Since the NBA opened its doors in 1946, there have been more than 3,600 players to grace the hardwood in over 40 different cities. Some of the greatest athletes the world has ever seen have tallied over 10 million points in the regular season and the playoffs combined. 17 different franchises have hoisted an NBA championship trophy, and the league has been run by four different commissioners. But over the last six decades, there's been only one man working for a franchise in the NBA the entire time a Philadelphia franchise that fittingly won the very first NBA championship in 1947. That man, the one they call Superstat, is Harvey Pollack. This was at the Hall of Fame. Well, he was there to uh, see me, he said, Harvey, to the best stat man the world has ever seen, your friend, Larry Bird. Larry Legend. And we've been friends ever, ever since. Harvey Pollack knows more than anyone about the NBA, its rich history, its players, and the statistics that make up the game. He practically invented some of the stats and phrases we now commonly associate with basketball, and he's never been shy about the impact he's had on the NBA and NBA players. <laughs> and I said to Magic, I said, hey, Magic, you know, without me, you wouldn't even be here. He said, what do you mean? Why wouldn't I be here? I said, who do you think invented the term triple-double? In a career that began as an assistant PR man for the Philadelphia Warriors and that has spanned more than half a century, Harvey has compiled an impressive list of accolades and accomplishments. His walls are adorned with photos, plaques, and memorabilia that he's collected over the years, and he's been elected to over a dozen different halls of fame, including the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Well, it was really special because even today, I'm the only statistician in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He counts among his friends some of the greatest players to ever play in the NBA, and all of them have shared a mutual love and respect for Harvey and what he's meant to the game. Harvey is, is uh, definitely a legend's legend, so to speak. You know, uh, Harvey knows more about basketball than any single man uh, or single team of uh, men uh, who claim to know about basketball. Hey, speak of the devil. Nobody knows more about this or cares more about these guys and about this game than this man right here. During his time with the NBA, Harvey has witnessed some incredible moments, and thanks to Harvey, the single most impressive scoring performance in NBA history in the famous game that was never seen was relayed to the rest of the world. Of all the days that I've been in the league over these 64 years, that was the busiest day I ever spent in the NBA. The Philadelphia Inquirer decided not to send a writer, and they asked me to cover the game for them. So actually, I'm the person that let the, the world know that Wilt got 100 points. The only cameraman that was in the building, he was just standing there. He says, well, we don't know what to, to take. Well, Wilt was sitting on the stool uh, they didn't have uh, any lockers in right. those days up in that Hershey arena. I said, well, this, what happened here tonight? And he said, well, we got 100 points. I said, well, don't you think you ought to get that in the picture? He said, well, how are you going to do that? So uh, over to the side was a guy from the Philadelphia Bulletin. I ripped out a page out of his pad, and I wrote that 100, which right. is right there. Mm -hmm. And I said, how about if Will holds that 100? We took the ball. And I gave him the sign, and, he, and that picture, and that ball is in the Hall of Fame. For someone who's been obsessed with numbers and records and whose most tangible contribution to the NBA has been a statistical yearbook now published at the end of every season, it's no surprise that Harvey is trying to set a record of his own. I never dreamed I would do this, but I'm trying to get into the Guinness Book of Records. I wear a different T-shirt every day. Mm. I started on June 29th, 2003, and in this coming June, I will reach the eight-year mark. I only wear them once, and, and I've given away 2,500 of them already to charity, including 400 to Sam Dalibert to take to Haiti. Every shirt was given to me. I didn't buy one of them, and uh, I still have about 600 yet to wear, so uh, it's a question of uh, the shirts going to outlast me, or am I, am I going to outlast the shirts? 
Harvey Pollack has lived in the same house in Philadelphia, where he raised his family almost as long as he's worked for the NBA. His routine has remained largely unchanged during that time. On game days, he leaves his house around 9 in the morning and arrives to work at his office at the Wells Fargo Center, where his team of interns is already pouring over sheets of stats from the various games around the NBA. The walls of Harvey's office are plastered with what he calls his inspiration, headshots of various leading ladies that he's received throughout different movie press packets, since he also finds time in his busy schedule to write movie reviews for the local paper. It's virtually impossible to work for the NBA, and especially the Sixers, and not have a relationship with Harvey Pollack. It didn't take long for Elton Brand to meet Harvey when he signed with Philadelphia three years ago. You know, I learned about Harvey you know, as soon as I got here. You know, he's a mainstay in the organization and in the NBA and professional sports as it is. You know, he's been here um, before the NBA started. He's been involved with professional sports, you know, so he's a great guy, great ball of energy. You know, it's great uh, seeing him around. We appreciate him. Current Sixers head coach Doug Collins spent his entire career as a player in Philadelphia, and he's always shared a love and passion for numbers with Harvey. I remember I used to have trivia games with him when, when we were on trips, and, and invariably he would have the right answers for all the games. The thing I love about Harvey is his passion. Um, he has a passion for numbers and how numbers play into the game, and he's always been incredibly creative with that. That's what I love about it. He's sort of an out-of-the-box thinker. Uh, came up with stats, uh, you know, how many times the team won the jump ball. I mean, all different kind of stuff that, uh, you know, no, nobody ever thought about doing. I mean, when Bobby Jones was here, he used to keep a stat on how many points a guy would score against Bobby Jones uh, during the course of a game when he were pushing him for all league defense and the best uh, defender in the league. So um, I love passionate people, and, and Harvey's all about that. He loves uh, not only the 76ers, but if you go to the Palestra, he's out the Palestra. He and his son Ronnie are down there crunching the, the stats. And I mean, he's, uh, he's been a, a real Pied Piper for a lot of guys in this business to try to take, uh, take what he's done and, and keep it going. Harvey has always had a knack for off the wall stats, like the number of players with visible tattoos, or the Tree and Airs Club for NBA players who didn't record a single stat in any NBA game over the course of a season, leaving nothing but zeros in the record books. Players and coaches alike have helped contribute to Harvey's ever-growing statistical yearbook, which started off as 36 pages in the 1960s. A lot of coaches and general managers in this league uh, give me ideas. Uh, like Billy King gave me one about the rebounds. And Tony DeLeo gave me the one about the assists. Mm -hmm. Rick Carlisle gave me one about the, uh, who wins the opening tap in the overtime. Do they win the game? Despite keeping records for the entire NBA, as well as helping to run a statistics operation for multiple colleges and other sports, Harvey still follows the current Philadelphia team very closely. With the 41-41 regular season record this year, the Sixers drew the seventh seed in the NBA playoffs and have faced a difficult opponent in the Miami Heat in their big three. Harvey has seen the Philadelphia franchise win four times over the course of his career, and he's the only person to have been a part of all four of those championship organizations. Despite the difficult task the Sixers face in the postseason, Harvey is optimistic about the team's chances. I'm hopeful that, that we win one. Should the Sixers make an improbable run at another NBA title this postseason, Harvey has a gift from a former intern that he's saving for this special occasion. He brought back with him a bottle of sake. And I told him, I'm going to put it in this refrigerator here, but I'm not going to drink it until we win the title. So I still have that bottle, Heaty, in case you see this, and, and, and I'm going to drink it as soon as the Sixers win the championship.